What's up guys? Thank you for joining. Today I'm going to ask ChatGPT to perform a year-over-year -year growth calculation in Power BI and this is going to be really fun folks. So stay tuned. Hey, before we get started, if this is the first time you stopped by this channel, please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. So now, let's do this, folks. So this is the Power BI report that we're going to be using. And real quick, I have here different tables. I have the fact table called internet sales. We also have a calendar table here called dates. And also we have a table here that stores measures and we also have other dimension tables here okay so on the left side here we have a calculation performed by myself and then on the right our goal is to find and ask gpt to perform a year-over-year -year growth calculation and do the calculation here as well and see how different the numbers are so let's do this so now let's go over the website real quick here it is if you want to follow along and you haven't created an account yet, it's highly recommended create an account and it's free. So now let's ask the question, my friends, because this is powerful. So the question that we're going to ask here, what is a DAX piece of code for previous year sales in Power BI? And then let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, my friends. There you go, it's working. So it's giving you some context there. So the good thing about this tool is that we can ask the same question again, so the tool can regenerate another response. So let's do that. I don't think this is the right way to write a previous year calculation because I already have the background. I already know how it works. So I'm going to ask the same question again. So, and let's see what happens. It's giving you more details here. It's quite right in my opinion, but let's ask the tool one more time and let's see what happens. And we can keep asking questions here to find the right answer if we want. Let's follow up with another question here and let's see what happens. Uh-huh. As you can see, now it is working perfectly fine, my friends. So what's happening here is that it's using the calculate function and then there is a filter there called date add because we care about the previous year. So we're using this function called date add. So minus one is the number of intervals and then the interval is year. So this is totally fine, my friends. So what we can do next is just copy the code and start playing with it. So we're gonna copy the code real quick into Power BI. And here, so let's create a new measure Control V and let's rename this previous year cells and let's add here to differentiate it, okay? From the other one that I created initially, okay? Previous year cells chat. So now here we can trick the code a little bit and then, so we get about sales amount here and let's see which column is the sales amount uh, within the internet sales table so let's see here it is and then i think we are good to go here now so check this out so we're just formatting the code a little bit and let's see what happens let's approve the changes so the next step here is to ask another question and we care about the year over year growth calculation so let's go back to the platform again and let's create a new chat let's find the year over year growth calculation 
So year over year growth with DAX Power BI. So let's see what happens. So it's giving you some background there. And then we have their variables as well. So let's ask the same question again and let's see what happens. And remember that this tool is not perfect, but it gives you an idea about the calculation. So let's see what happens here. And uh, let's see. Let's ask to write the code. So write the DAX code. And let's see what happens. So just that that's the general definition. So let's ask the same question again. There you go. I think that looks a little bit better. So now let's give this tool more direction. Use variables and the divide function. So let's see what happens. Yep. As you can see, this code, it's not perfect, but it's giving you some direction here. So now it depends on the Power BI developer to start tweaking the code. And that's what we're gonna do here real quick. So let's copy this code right here. And then let's go back to Power BI Desktop. We're gonna create another measure here, new measure. And let's see what happens, okay? Control V, and then here, let's call this chat to differentiate it, okay? And we have variables, that's perfect. We don't need this. So now, this is perfect. We just need to replace this with the column that we are gonna add values here, okay? This is gonna be the sales amount from the inner sales table. And then for previous year data, we have to make a couple of adjustments here. So let's do that. And remember the code is not perfect, but it's giving you a general idea about the calculation. And let's use here the calculate function. We can keep using here the sum function, internet sales, sales amount here. And then as you might remember, we can use different functions here. We can use the same period last year, or we can use another function called date add. I like to use date add here. And then we're gonna reference the calendar table here. And here we need to use the number of intervals. So it's gonna be minus one, and then the interval is gonna be year. So close parenthesis, close parenthesis for calculate. And then I think we are good to go now. This piece is perfectly fine because that's the way how we find the rate here. Let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. Seems like it's working fine here. And let's duplicate this visual right here. And remember, I created these measures. And remember the goal here is to compare the results, okay? So we can keep total sales human because that's going to be the same. And how about if we use previous year sales, this function right here, let's see what happens. And then let's use the other function here, the year of year growth calculation. It's working fine folks. So now if we want, we can also add here percentage. Let's see what happens. It's working fine, folks. So there are a couple of things here. The one that I work on the left, I added a couple of filters here because we don't have data in 2021. So let me show you the measures real quick. So this is for sales. Check this out, the code. 
since I have the knowledge, what I did was, if we don't have data, if it's blank, just leave it blank. If not, use this function. Since we don't have data in 2021, here we only are seeing the calculations up to 2020. That's human being power here, right? Because we are, we know what's going on. We are making the adjustments, playing with the code here. So now let's check the other measure if you want to look at the other one right here. Same story here, right? If we don't, if it's blank for previous year here, just give us blank. If not, do the math. And that's the reason that we don't have here again 2021 because we don't have any data in 2021. So now if we take a look at the results by using chat GPT, they are amazing. It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. So what is the message here? With chat GPT, you need to ask the right questions. If you don't get the right answer, keep asking the same question a couple of times and then keep asking follow up questions. So in the end, the goal is to find the most accurate code. It's not going to be perfect, but with your knowledge, you can tweak the code and find the right results. And that's what we did here. As you can see, this tool is really powerful. You need to ask the right questions and then the right follow up questions. If you don't get the right results, you can tweak the question a little bit. And then with the final outcome, you can copy and paste this into Power BI Desktop and then you start playing with the code there as well. And finally, you might get what you're looking for. If you haven't played with this tool, it's highly recommended. But if you have played with this tool, so let me know your experience in the comments below. And thank you guys for your time again and see you in my next tutorial.